Episode 7 is here everyone, let's go! Today we're going to talk about UV editing, which is a super cool way to put textures on your meshes. This one's going to be a little bit hard to follow since it's a little bit of a complex method, but trust me, once you learn this, it's going to be so helpful. So, let's go. Okay, so to start with UV editing, I'm just going to show a little demonstration as to how it actually works. So you start off with your cube, you know, untextured, looking basic, uh, nothing much to it. But when you start UV editing, Blender is actually going to lay out every single face uh, just flat like this. So essentially what this is doing, I'll try to show it in edit mode, is just unfolding the cube face by face until it's completely flat. Uh, taking one face here, putting it flat on the ground. Let's see, another here, flat on the ground like that. This one's going to come out flat and then this one is going to come all the way down here like that. So this is really messy. Obviously, I cleaned it up here if every face was just uh, laid out straight and flat. And uh, yeah, they're all like, so yeah, they're all unfolded and flattened onto a single plane like this. Now, Blender takes your texture, uh, whatever it may be. I picked this random crap I found online and it's going to take that flat plane and it's going to project the texture on that plane, just as if a single little section of that picture was right on top of the plane. And that's going to be shown right here. So the part of the texture that's actually like overlapping the plane is the only bit that's going to actually show on the plane. The rest of it, um, you could move the plane around so that a different part of the texture shows on it, but the only part of the texture that's going to show is the bit that's like actually covering the plane. So this is going to be the final form, what the cube kind of looks like. Uh, it's exactly the same as it was uh, to start, like the geometry hasn't changed at all, but now just every face has been lied out in the UV editor and has a texture on it. Almost every video game engine uses this, every developer uses this. I mean, this is like the way that people texture. So let's try it ourselves. I'm just going to start with a basic cube. I want to keep things nice and simple, not too complicated. And now to start, we're actually not going to go to the UV editor. We're going to go to the shading tab because we actually have to give the cube an image for the UV editor to work with. So I just hit new material, uh, click add, search, and look for an image texture. You should get a node looking like this and just plug that color into the base color of the principled BSDF node. It should turn black because we don't have a texture yet. So just click open and find any picture you want saved on your computer. I'm just gonna use my YouTube logo because why not now go over to the UV editing tab and you should see something like this Just like the uh, example I showed at the start of the video You can see every face has been laid out nice and flat on the UV editor now There's something going on called linked selectability and what this means is just if you select a face in the viewport That's the face that's going to show up in the UV editor you select every face by pressing a you'll see every face in the UV editor So on so on now when you have every face selected in the UV editor you can scale them you can move them you can rotate rotate them, all that stuff, but let me go to material preview mode and we can see that actually changes the texture on the cube. And why is that? Because if you take a face, it's been unfolded, unwrapped, and if we move it, it's changing the position of the texture that the cube is coloring. Like if I put it in the center of the eye here, you can see it's going to show the center of the eye on the cube because that's the part of the texture that's being projected onto that face. Now there's different ways of projecting as well. Like if I go to a 2D view, I can press U and uh, project from view, and this is going to project the cube from my viewport view. Now the cube has been projected from the view I had in the viewport, but you can see this is going to heavily distort the side faces because I projected them like vertically like this. So to fix that, you can just press them all again, hit numpad one for a side 2D view, you project from view, and now it's projecting from the side instead of from the top. So we get a nice clean view like that. Same thing with these sides, numpad three, you project from view, nice clean side. And now every side looks just about even. Now there's another one you can do by press all the faces, U and Q projection. This is going to project everything as a, as if it were just a flat face onto this UV editor. Q projecting is a great way of getting things to look nice and even and just well-rounded if you're trying to get basically the same texture look for your entire mesh. And if you press U again, there's also smart UV project, and this one just unwraps your mesh in a way that the computer thinks would spread the entire texture around your mesh pretty evenly. So projecting from view is useful if you're trying to get like a very specific part of the image to align with a really specific part of your mesh. Cube projection is good if you just don't really know what you're doing with UV unwrapping and you just want to get the texture like somewhat good looking on your mesh. And smart UV project is if you want to get the whole texture covering your mesh and you want just a nice clean even look with no stretched faces. They're all pretty similar though so just do whatever you think is going to
to fit your mesh the best. Well, now that we have all that knowledge, let's try a couple things. So to start, let's get a little bit more of a complex mesh. I'm just going to press Control 2 for a subdivision surface modifier, crank that guy up a couple times and apply it, shade it smooth, and now we've got a whole lot more faces we can work with. And under the shading tab, I'm going to change the picture to an actual texture this time. All right, let's see what we can do with this. So if I just press U and let's see, Q projection maybe, I'll press all the faces, scale them up a little bit, and you can see that actually looks pretty good. The seams are pretty hard to see, and yeah, it looks pretty well-rounded. All right, that's decent. Uh, let's try smart UV project. Oh, dang. Okay, way different. Uh, scale all these up a little bit till the wood looks a little bit better, and yeah, you can see it's actually a little bit worse. When I used a smart UV project, it actually put the seams in different spots. You can see that's creating some weird little distortions in the mesh. So yeah, smart UV project would not be good for this one. And then from a top, t from a top view, let's just try uh, project from view. So edit mode, select everything, U, project from view, scale it way up, and yeah, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so the top obviously looks great, and yeah, you can see the sides are a little bit stretched right here, but it's it's actually pretty good. Although I'm going to go back to Q projection since I think that looks the best for this mesh. And in terms of scale, let's see what we can get. Maybe something like this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So the more you do UV editing, the more you'll start to notice these little seams right here. you will trace over them, like, yeah, this part right there, right here, right down here. And these guys are pretty annoying to work with. Basically, the more complicated your UV editing gets, like if you got a ton of curves and overlapping parts of your mesh and a ton of polygons, the more these little seams and distortions start to become a problem. There's a lot of techniques you can use for uh, getting rid of them and just trying to work around them, but they can get pretty complicated. So let's just stick with the basic stuff. Now that we've learned all that, I want to show you guys a super cool application of UV editing that can be used to save you so much time when you use Blender. I'm going to add in a cube, scale it down just a little bit, make it pretty thin, uh, SY, make it a rectangle just like this, go into edit mode, uh, numpad 1, wireframe, so we can select all these outside edges right here. Now just control B, use your mouse wheel to make those a little bit flat. There we go, and shade it smooth. Now let's go to the shader editor, give this a new material, search for that lovely image texture, and just plug it into the base color. But for this, you'll see I found a picture of an iPhone on Google. Now if I go to the UV editor, I can press numpad 7 to go to a top 2D view, press A to select everything, U, and project from view. Now let's grab all this, rotate it 90 degrees like that, press S, scale it way up, scale U down, grab all these guys and move them down, and grab these top faces and move them up, and you can see just like that, and just like that, you can basically create a phone screen. Here, I'm going to grab these outside edges and make them black real quick. Smart UV project them, press, select them all, press S and 0 to get them down to basically nothing, and just put them over a black area of the mesh. And same with that back face. Select it all, S, 0, and move it up to a black part. Shade it smooth, grab these top faces, bevel them just a little bit, and bam, you literally have a phone. If you wanted to use this as a background prop or as a little accessory in a game, it'd be perfect for that. Yeah, with the power of UV editing, you can make photorealistic objects in just a couple of seconds. I mean, in the words of Ian Hubert, if you want something to look photorealistic, just use a photo. I mean, with techniques like this, you can make background props, you can make accessories, things to add to your game, things to add to a map, an infinite amount of objects, and an infinite amount of detail you can add to those objects. I mean, imagine UV editing like a really, really detailed sculpt, and then just doing exactly what I did. I mean, you'd have insane textures and an insane mesh. I mean, that object would just look so good. Definitely experiment with UV editing, see what you can do with it, and of course, don't forget to head over to Creality Cloud, check out the comments, and reply with what you've been able to make with UV editing. I hope you all learned something today, and stay tuned for the next episode of this series, which is actually going to be the finale, the very last one. It's going to be a party. Alright, see you guys.